Good morning and welcome to the first session of Dewey Decimal Classification. I'm Emily Nimsikant, the Cataloging Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Thank you all for coming and joining me for this class. As I mentioned before, this is the URL for the class webpage, so be sure to make a note of this. And I just kind of wanted to start by giving you an overview of the whole class, the three session layout. I did want to mention that, as you saw when you signed up, these sessions are designed to last for an hour and a half from 9.30 to 11. Today's session will probably actually be a little bit shorter, probably closer to an hour. And that's because the way the sessions are set up, we're going to spend about an hour going through new material each time, and then there will be assignments. And so for the next two weeks, what we will do is we'll spend the first hour from 9.30 to 10.30 going over the week's new material. And then from 10.30 to 11, we'll have a half hour where you can ask me questions on the assignment that was due that week. So if you're confused on something when you're going through working on it during the week, remember that you will have a chance to ask questions in the class setting. I mean, you can always go ahead and ask me questions during the week as you're working on things. You can email me or call me, but we will have class time to work on the assignments as well. So today, session one is just going to kind of be a general overview. We'll talk a little bit about what the Dewey Decimal classification is. And we're assuming that you have at least a familiarity with the setup of it. But we'll talk about some of the notes that you'll see as you go through the schedules, the idea of subjects versus discipline, manual entries that will help you choose numbers to assign. And then we're going to discuss Web Dewey, which is OCLC's online version of Dewey. And you will get a trial login to use with Web Dewey for this class if you don't want to use a print version or if you don't have a print version. Um, then next week in session two, we'll talk more about subjects and disciplines and how to assign numbers for um, items that have topics in multiple disciplines. And we'll get started on the concept of number building. A lot of working with Dewey is using the various tables in order to build numbers. And so we'll work with Table 1 next week, and then Session 3 will continue with the very end of Table 1, and then Tables 2, 3, and 4. Okay, I'm sure most of you are familiar at least with what the Dewey Decimal Classification is. You're probably aware of the schedules with the various numbers. Um, basically, it's issued in a full version and an abridged version. A new edition is issued in print about every seven years. Right now we're on the 22nd edition of the full Dewey and the 14th of the abridged Dewey. And the abridged is what we're going to be focusing on in this class. Let's see, I think I, oops, I actually did skip a slide here. Um, to give more details on the difference between abridged and full, we are, like I said, we're going to work with the abridged in this class. It has only one volume and just four tables. And it's generally appropriate for libraries with 20,000 titles or fewer. And we're talking about nonfiction titles when we give that estimate. The full, which we're not going to be working with in this class, is much more expanded. It has four volumes and six tables and is appropriate for larger libraries or special libraries that focus a lot on a certain topic and they need very expanded schedules in order to encompass all of the topics that are involved in their special library. Like I said, they're issued in print about every seven years, but between these editions, there are monthly updates provided online. And then quarterly, the web version, Web Dewey and abridged Web Dewey, they're updated with these monthly updates. So online is really the way to keep up with the updates more frequently instead of waiting for the next print edition to come out. Here is a screenshot of what the updates page looks like if you go to the OCLC website and the address is at the top of the screen there you'll see that there's a list of new and changed entries various PDF files or Word documents and if you click on one of those files you'll see a list of changes. It'll show you the number and you can see the underlined changes are things that were added and there are things crossed out. They were obviously taken out in this update. Okay, so the abridged Dewey Decimal Classification has a number of new parts. There is the new features, 
section, which basically tells you what has changed since the last time something came out. Um, there's an introduction, which gives you a lot of instructions on how to use Dewey Decimal Classification. The index to the introduction and the glossary, some more reference material helping you know what you're doing. There's a manual that gives you specific instructions on choosing between two numbers or what you should class at a certain number. There's a section on relocations and discontinuations, which goes into more detail about things that have changed since the last session. There are the tables. As I mentioned, there are four tables in abridged Dewey, and those are used for number building. Then there are the summaries of the schedule that give you the brief breakdown of each of the classes. The schedules themselves, where you find the numbers and it tells you which each one is used for. And then there's the relative index, which is basically just an index, and this is a lot of the time where you start. It has a list of all the topics, and you can start here and look it up, and it will tell you which number to go to in the schedules. Let's talk in a little bit more detail about the introduction. In a lot of books, you know, you kind of think the introduction is sort of material that you can skip over, just general introductory material that isn't that relevant to the rest of the material, but in the case of Dewey, the introduction is very important. A lot of instructions are given here that tell you what the heck you're doing when you want to assign a number, so if you are unfamiliar with Dewey and you're new to working with the numbers, I would greatly recommend reading the introduction. That will give you a lot of information about what you need to do, so do not skip the introduction in this case. You know, on the last slide I mentioned that the introduction has an index to itself. It's obviously, it's long enough, it has enough good information in there that it needs an index, so just remember, the introduction equals instructions, and you should not skip it. It is very important to learning how to work with Dewey. It tells you things like how to use the different parts, how to choose between numbers. Instructions on building numbers with the tables are included in the introduction. If you need more information beyond this on using Dewey, there are other publications that will tell you how to use it, and there is a handout on the class webpage entitled Dewey Decimal Classification Resources, and I would recommend consulting that as well. As you get used to navigating through the Dewey schedules, you'll notice there's a number of notes that tell you what to do. Um, the introduction has a section 7.8 through 7.25, and this gives you more information about the notes. They do things like specify what is covered in a particular class, provide cross-references, so if you're looking in one area, it will tell you, no, this number doesn't go here, you should class it in a different area. It provides instructions on choosing the proper class or how to build a number for a certain class, and just tell you the various options you have amongst all of these things. Here's an example of a page from the print version of Dewey, and there are several notes included on this page. Things like see also, see the manual, it'll give you a cross-reference, it'll tell you what to class here, and different numbers to class things in. So I kind of made a reference to a lot of those here, but here are the various notes we'll discuss. Class here tells you exactly what to put in a certain area, including, it's sort of similar to class here, it tells you the type of things that are included in this area. Notes that begin with class will tell you somewhere else to put a different topic. See also will tell you there's a related topic that you also might want to consult on this. The C manual notes tell you exactly that, that there are more instructions about this in the manual, and it can help you decide between this number and a different number, for example. It can give you instructions on adding standard subdivisions or adding numbers to base numbers, and those will make a lot more sense when we start talking about tables next week. You don't have to worry about those too much now. Any questions on anything we've covered so far? Okay, we'll keep going then. 
Now, I specifically want to talk about Section 5 of the introduction. If you go back and read this after class, it's called Classifying with the DDC. And this is sort of the framework we're going to work with for the rest of the session and some of the next session. It will talk about determining the subject of a work, determining the discipline of a work, what to do when you have more than one subject in the same discipline, what to do when you have more than one or more subjects in more than one discipline, and then something called the table of last resort. And we're going to get to the first three of those things today, and the other ones we'll wait until next week. Okay, the subject, straight out of Dewey, a direct quote is that it is an object of study, also called a topic. It may be a person or a group of persons, things, a place, process, activity, abstraction, or any combination of these. Basically, the subject is what the book is about. It is a topic. If you have a book on taking care of your dog, then dogs is the subject. It's a very concrete way of representing what the book is about. And it's a little bit hard to grasp the difference between a subject and a discipline, but a discipline, Dewey's direct quote definition is an organized field of study or branch of knowledge. He gives the example of religion, physics, and criminology. And the way I think about it is that discipline is sort of more of a way of approaching a topic whether, as opposed to the subject itself. Um, for example, to go with the subject of dogs, um, a book about dogs could be approached from the discipline of zoology if it's a very biologically based that just tells you a lot about the biology of dogs. But if it's a book about caring for your pet dog, that would go in the discipline of animal husbandry, and a subset of that is pets. So there would be a different number for a book about dogs. The subject is still dogs, but it could be a different discipline that might determine the subject or the, the number you choose if it's the discipline of zoology or the discipline of animal husbandry. Any questions about the difference between subject and discipline? Okay, we will go on then. So it's easier to wrap your brain around this when we start actually trying to do an example of it. So we'll, this will help both give examples of the difference between subject and discipline and start to give you an idea of how you navigate Dewey. How do you start trying to find a number for something? And so let's pretend that we have a book called Ciphers, Breaking the Code. It's obviously about codes and ciphers. So whether you're using the print version or web Dewey, you would start by going to the relative index. In the print version, the relative index is going to be at the back. Here is a screenshot of what it looks like. Let me get my highlighter out again. And let's say we're just going to go with the title. You know, it's not always easy. The examples in this class are going to be a little bit artificial because we're just looking at titles and we don't have the book in front of us to see more about what it's about. But Starting with the title, we'll look up ciphers in the relative index, and we'll see that it tells us that it's part of cryptography and directs us towards the number 652. And so we go and look up 652, and you'll see that the number is for processes of written communication, and we'll see that cryptography is mentioned here. It gives us some instructions that says interdisciplinary works on cryptography are here, sort of general works, but if we have cryptographic techniques used for a specific purpose, it tells you to see the number for the specific purpose. For example, if you're talking about security and computer systems, it will be classed with the number for computer systems. Now I'm going to do that same search in Web Dewey. This is to give you a little bit of an idea of what the interface looks like. And you'll see there's a number of options. In this case, I usually start out getting into Web Dewey by browsing. You'll see there's search options across the top. You can search versus browse. I usually browse. And you have several options as for what you want to browse. And I can start with the relative index. You'll see I've selected that radio button there and typed in ciphers. And the results look pretty similar to that printed page we were looking at before. We see that ciphers 
cryptography is highlighted and the number is 652. The nice thing about WebDUI is that you can click on it. The 652 is a hyperlink instead of having to flip through pages. So when you click on 652, let's see, it will take you through to something similar to that page we were looking at. Um, before we get there, I just wanted to mention really quick, there's another option for browsing the relative index. You'll see there's an option, relative index with KWIC, quick after it, and that stands for keyword in context. And instead of just showing you topics that begin with the word that you're looking for, it shows you anywhere that it comes up. And so you'll see if we search for cryptography in the keyword in context relative index, it shows you all the topics that have cryptography in it. You'll see that even though ciphers does not begin with cryptography, it shows up in this search. And so that's just another thing to keep in mind if you want more context for your search and not just to browse alphabetically headings that start with the term you're looking for. But either way, we get the number 652, we click on that hyperlink, and it takes us to that page. Six, it's similar to the page in the written version with the processes of written communication. And again, something to get used to with WebDUI is that the notes are down below. You'll see interdisciplinary works on cryptography are here. And again, it tells you that if you're talking about a specific purpose, you should class it with the purpose. So if we just had a general book about cryptography in general, and again, this is where it's hard to tell from just the title, but we'll pretend like we have just a general work on cryptography, we would class it with 652. Now there are other options. Like I said, this note tells you that if it's for a specific purpose, you might want to look under that purpose. For example, if you were talking about security and computer systems, you would go to that 005.8. There's a link down there. And if you click through on that, it takes you right there. And it tells you that data encryption is classed here. And it also kind of refers you back to that 652. If you might be looking here for a general interdisciplinary work on cryptography, it tells you, no, this doesn't go here. You can see there's a reference to 652 there as well. But if we had a work about computer data encryption, we could put it here. And so you can see this is sort of getting at how the same subject can be treated in different disciplines. If it's from the discipline of computer encryption, then cryptography will go in a different number class than if it's just a general work cryptography. Now we'll go back to our relative index screenshot here. And you see there's also an option for cryptography recreation. And that has the number of 793.73. So if we click through on that, you'll see that it's under puzzles and puzzle games. And, you know, so what we're talking about here is codes just for fun, just for people trying to break codes as a form of recreation rather than code breaking for security purposes. So if you had a book about that, that is yet another option. And another thing to mention about WebDUI is if you scroll down further on the screen, you'll see that there are some subject terms and the relative index terms that you can kind of look at and get an idea whether this is the right topic you want to be in or not. So if we had a book about ciphers, just puzzles for recreational purposes, having fun, we might put it in 793.7. So hopefully this has given you a better idea of the difference between a subject and how it can be treated for multiple disciplines, and also just an idea of navigating both the print DEWEY and the web DEWEY. One thing I did want to point out about the web DEWEY is that you can also search all of DEWEY instead of the relative index. This is obviously a feature that's not available in the print version. You can't do a keyword search through all the print versions. So this is an option to consider when you're using web DEWEY. You can do a 
keyword search out of all the text, the entire Dewey, the introduction, all of the schedules. So if you're just looking for a word that may not be the term that's found in the relative index, this is something to consider. You can do Boolean searches over a number of fields. So for example, if we did our search for cryptography, you'll see some of these fields come up and you won't see the term cryptography in any of these headings. But they all should look pretty familiar because they're ones that we have visited for the most part in our last search for cryptography. For example, you know, if you look at the first one, the 003 systems, it doesn't have any hint of how it relates to cryptography in the actual title. But if you click through, you'll see that it has a mention of cryptography down here. It says class coding for purpose of limiting access to information cryptography in 652. And that's obviously a number that we found by searching for cryptography itself. So sometimes it will just direct you back to the original heading anyway, but it's a good thing to keep in mind if you want to search more thoroughly and see if you're just not quite finding the right synonym for something, but maybe you can find a note that tells you, yes, this goes here, and then you can be directed towards the actual term that's used. So searching by keyword rather than browsing the relative index is another thing to keep in mind when you're using Web Dewey. Any questions about that so far? Okay, now sometimes, again, things are not as straightforward. It might be a little bit harder to tell which discipline things fit into, and you'll, as you go along, you'll kind of learn this is a part of working with Dewey. You know, there's a little bit more art and science to it sometimes. You have to kind of get a feel for what the book's about and try different things to try and find a number that fits. For example, again, from the title, it's hard to tell what this book is about. It could be about something from a historical perspective. Say it's about the American military breaking German and Japanese codes during World War II. And so the results that we've looked at so far for cryptography don't say anything about a specific time period or historical approach to something. So we might want to try a totally different tactic and search for World War, browse for World War II in the relative index. And if you do that, you'll see it directs you to World War II, 1939 to 1945, and the number is 940.53. And if you click through on that hyperlink, it will take you to the numbers for this. You'll see that this is the general note for World War. However, there is, again, something you just kind of have to get used to as you go through working with Dewey, is that there are lots of notes, and the notes will sometimes direct you to a, another number, so don't ever take a number for granted until you've looked at the notes. And you'll see down here there's a note that tells you that military history during World War II should go in 940.54. And so since, you know, we're talking about the military, let's just assume that this book is about the military breaking codes during World War II, we probably would want to go with the military history of World War II here. So 940.54 is the number we'd go for in this case. So again, it's just kind of sort of, you'll get more used to it as you go along. There's a just a number of different approaches you could take, and sometimes you kind of have to use your judgment call and be able to try a few different options until you find a number that really seems right and works well within your collection. That's another thing to keep in mind is that you want to classify things according to what the rest of your collection and what will work best in your situation. Now there's could be from a entirely different perspective. It could be about computer hackers and how they break codes and their actions and consequences. So if you search for computer hackers, sometimes you just won't have the right term. You could get no results. That's another thing to know about 
navigating Dewey is that sometimes it's a matter of finding the right words to use. You kind of have to keep guessing and using various synonyms and you might have to try a few different things before you can come up with a term that is used in the relative index. And also you'll notice here we're searching through all fields and not just in the relative index because this is kind of, if you're less sure about the term you're using, you might want to go ahead and search and just see if it comes up anywhere. So instead, we could probably try something like computer crime. You'll see that that is mentioned. We've got a couple of different options here, criminal offenses and then the more specific offenses against property. So if we click through to criminal offenses, you'll see that it's a fairly general definition of crime. You'll look at the notes. It'll tell you what kind of crimes go here. If we scroll down, again, we're going to look at those subject headings and relative index terms. And you'll see that computer crimes is listed here as something that falls under this classification number. Now, if we look at that second option, the crimes against property, it's a more specific number, a subdivision. And you can see that computer crimes is a subject heading under this one as well. So it would probably depend on what exactly the crime was discussed in this book. If they, the criminals just access databases to get information, you'd probably use 364.1. But for example, if they install, install viruses and cause property damage, you could probably use the more specific 364.16. Does anyone have any questions so far on assigning numbers and navigating Dewey? Okay, we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to go back to the concept of we're moving through section 5 of the introduction, the various areas under classifying with the DDC. We talked about determining the subject and the discipline and how you use those to kind of navigate schedule and choose a number. But what do you do if you have more than one subject in the same discipline? For example, if you have a book that's about both cats and dogs, do you class it with cats or do you class it with dogs? Well, there's a few rules that you follow, so we'll go through those. And this is all found in section 5 of the introduction. There are actually five rules for dealing with more than one subject in the same discipline. The fuller treatment rule, the first of two rule, the rule of three, the rule of zero, and the rule of application. And we're going to go through those one at a time. The fuller treatment rule is pretty simple. If you have two or more subjects in one book and one of them is covered more fully, it has more coverage than the others, you class your book with that subject. So let's do another example here. Say we have a book called Schooling Alternatives, and it contains information about parochial, private, and home schools. So that's three different subjects in that book. The parochial school material has 40 pages. Private school materials, 35. So they're about the same. But the home school material has 82 pages. So it's clear that home school has the fuller treatment in this book. So let's look up homeschool. We'll browse it in the relative index. You'll see it is a topic listed in the relative index and it directs us towards 371.04. We see that the number 371.04 is for alternative schools, but we want to we'll check the note. It says including homeschools and homeschooling, so we know that this is where we want to be for homeschools. Now it is important, like I said, Dewey has a lot of notes that tell you exceptions to the rules, so it's important to kind of get used to navigating through the hierarchy to make sure you're in the correct discipline, read up and down for instructions. So we are in the education discipline, we look up here at 370. And so we go up a level to check for notes and instructions that might contradict the more specific number. So alternative schools, the 371.04, is a subset of specific kinds of schools. 
And if you look at the notes down below, there aren't really any instructions that contradict this, so that's okay. We'll go up one more level under schools and their activities, and we look at the notes, and there's nothing that tells us that home schools go anywhere other than what we were looking at. And the highest level of education has no notes, but if we clicked on that 370, you'll see there are some notes here. There's a table of preference that tells you the order in which you might want to assign numbers. We'll get into table of preference more later, but there aren't any instructions that contradict our note about home schools. And here's again just a fuller shot of that table of preference. So we know which number to use for homeschool. Just for the sake of learning how to navigate the schedules, let's look up the other numbers for the other types of schools talked about in this book. Going back to our original screen, you'll see that the number for religious schools is 371.07. That's over here. If you click on that, Christian religious schools or parochial schools are 371.071. And there's no more notes under there that tell you there's no more subdivisions or anything. So this would be our number for parochial schools. Private schools, you'll see, is under 371.02. That was our third type of school in this book. And there's no further subdivisions under here. So our three options for topics here are private schools in 371.02, home schools in 371.04, and parochial schools in 371.071. Like we said before, since the home school material has the fuller treatment, we go with that number. The book is classed at 371.04. Are there any questions about the rule of fuller treatment? Okay, we'll go on to the next rule then. It's called the first of two rule. And this rule comes into play if you have two subjects and there isn't one that receives fuller treatment when you have, they're pretty much treated the same. And so the direct quote from Dewey is, if two subjects receive equal treatment and are not used to introduce or explain one another, class the work with the subject whose number comes first in the DDC schedules. So that's why it's called the first of two. If they're treated about equally, you go with the one whose number comes first. Now there's a couple of exceptions to this. This is one of the things you'll learn about Dewey. There are exceptions to pretty much everything. There's usually the unless instructed otherwise exception, which means that if you have instructions for a particular number that tell you to do something different, then you go with that. And the other exception with the first of two rule is that if the two topics are the only two major subdivisions of a subject, then you don't use the first of two rule. And we'll give an example of this later on that will make much more sense than it does right now, I'm sure. So again, it makes more sense to look at an example. Let's say we have a book called The Waves of Sensation. It has a book about information about light waves and sound waves. And you'll see that light has 82 pages, sound has 79 pages, so they're pretty much the same. So I would not use the rule of fuller treatment in this case. So we have to look to see which one comes first. If we look up light in the relative index, we'll be directed to 535. You can see that it's a subdivision of specific forms of energy. If you look up sound in the relative index, you'll see that it's 534, which is also a subdivision of specific forms of energy. If you go up one level from either of those to look at the specific forms of energy heading, you'll see that there are five different headings underneath. So that means that light and sound are not the only two subdivisions. If they were the only two subdivisions, we would handle this differently, but they're not. So the first, this is a situation where the first of two rule would apply. And so you go with the one that comes first. So sound was 534 and light was 535. So we're going with sound because it comes first. So this book I would class at 534.
Now, like I said, there are some exceptions to this. Unless instructed otherwise, is sort of the catch-all exception for all of Dewey. There are several numbers that have kind of their own instructions, so when you find a number, always be sure to read the notes underneath it, see if it tells you to do something different than the general rules. Let's look at some instructed otherwise examples here. Say we have a book called Thank You Notes for Children. It has examples of thank you notes for children to write for different situations. Now we can pretty much be sure that this goes under etiquette. We'll say we've done a search for etiquette in the relative index. And normal and you you know there are a couple different options we could go with. There could be social correspondence because these are notes, they're written correspondence. But since we're talking particularly about children, we might want to go with etiquette for age groups and sexes. You'll see that's an option there under 395.1. And normally, according to the first to two rule, we would go with the one that comes first, but you want to check and see if there's an instruction that contradicts it. And in this case, you'll see there is a note. It says, class a subject with aspects in two or more subdivisions of 395 with the number coming last. So that is an exact opposite of the first of two, two rule, but it's a situation you have to look out for. If there are other instructions, right here in the schedules with the numbers, then they take precedence over those general rules. So in this case, we would go with the one coming last. But let's just go through and look up both of these. We see that etiquette for age groups and sexes does include children, so we know that's one of the numbers we should be considering. And social correspondence does seem like the one we should consider for thank you notes. It has written and spoken styles and forms of address. So again, if we were following the first to two rule, we would go with the one that comes first, but since the directions tell us to go with the one that comes last, we're going to go with that. So that's 395.4 for social correspondence. Any questions about why I made that exception? Here's another example of instructions that you might see when you're going through the schedules. Remember when we were looking at education for our homeschooling book, I said there was a table of preference listed in the education section, and table of preferences are basically things that tell you the order in which to choose numbers if you're choosing between two, and they do take precedence over the general instructions, like the first of two rule. They don't always contradict them, but sometimes they might. For example, if you were looking at a book about curriculum development for higher education, you'll see that curriculum, curricula comes at 375, but higher education is at 378, and so this is a situation, because higher education is listed first in the table of preference, that means that that's the one that you would go with, even though it contradicts the first of two rule. So these tables are another thing to look out for. They are a way of giving you instructions as far as choosing between two topics, which one is preferred. Here's another situation. If you have something about crystallography and mineralogy, you could look up both of those topics. And if you have something specifically about crystallographic mineralogy, it tells you to go with 549, so that's the later number, so again, this is a contradiction of the first to two rule. So there are a number of different ways in which these, unless, unless instructed otherwise, examples could appear. They could be specific notes, they could be tables of preference, so just keep your eye out and get used to looking for things. Don't always assume that just because there's a general rule in the introduction, don't assume that it always applies. Now the other exception to the first of two rule, as I mentioned, is the case where two topics are the only two major subdivisions of a subject. When we were looking at the light and sound book, there were at least three other subdivisions, so we didn't have to worry about this, but let's go with another example. Say we have a kid's book called Celebrate Freedom, and it contains information about 4th of July and Bastille Day. They're pretty equally matched. There's eight pages on 4th of July and seven pages on Bastille Day. So if we look up 4th of July in the relative index, we'll see that it is 
listed there at 394.2634. And it is a subdivision of the holidays of June, July, and August. You'll see that this is one going one level up to holidays of June, July, and August. If we do Bastille Day, we get this pretty similar results. It's 394.2635, and it's also a subdivision of holidays of June, July, and August. So because these are the only two, let's see, instead of applying the first of two rule, we go up and check and see if there are any other subdivisions, and there are not. These are the only two subdivisions, so because by going up one level we can encompass both of them, that's what we want to do in this case. So we wanted to class this book under holidays of June, July, and August at 394.263. Any questions about the first of two rule and the various exceptions to it? Okay. Let's go on to the next rule. This is called the rule of three. And the rule says to class a work on three or more subjects that are all subdivisions of a broader subject in the first higher number that includes them all. Unless one subject is treated more fully than the others. So obviously if the subject with one subject was treated more fully, we would use the first rule that we talked about, the rule of fuller treatment. But if you have three subjects or more that are all treated about the same, you want to do what, kind of what we did with that last example for two and go up one level to the first higher number that includes all of them. So let's go back again to our schooling alternatives example. And it has information about parochial, private, and home schools, but this time instead of saying that homeschool has 80 something pages, let's say it has 38, so it's pretty much in line with the other two topics. They're covered about the same. There's no topic that has more coverage than the others. So in that case, it looks familiar, we've been on this page before, you'll see that all three of them are under the topic specific kinds of schools. And again, we want to kind of go up a level in the hierarchy to make sure there aren't any instructions that tell us to do differently. And we don't see any, so we want to class this with 371 for schools and their activities, because that covers all three topics. Any questions about the rule of three? Okay, another rule, this one you probably won't see as often, but we'll just touch on it briefly here, called the rule of zero. And basically, the rule states that you prefer subdivisions numbered one through nine over zero, or prefer subdivisions with one zero to those with two zeros. And it kind of sounds abstract the way it's stated, but basically what it means, choose a number as specific as possible. And this helps if you look at an example, if you have a book on Eastern philosophy, let's say you look up Eastern philosophy in the relative index, and it directs you to 180, one of the things you might come across is 180, where it says ancient, medieval, and Eastern philosophy, but then you'll notice that 181 is just Eastern philosophy by itself, so you definitely want to go with 181 because it's more specific. And so just remembering that you would choose a number with a 1, through 9 over 0 is basically just a shorthand way of remembering that you want, always want to go with the most specific as possible number. And the last rule we're going to talk about is the rule of application, and that is when one subject is shown as affecting or influencing another, the subject being acted on is the one to be classified. So you classify it with the subject being acted on, not the one doing the affecting or influencing unless otherwise instructed, as usual, of course. So let's say we have a book called Nuclear Fallout, How the Atom Bomb Changed World Politics. So in this case, world politics is the thing being acted on. So we want to go with world politics for the topic. If you look up world politics, you'll be redirected to world history. We won't go through all the steps of that, but take my word for it. 
And so you'll see we end up at the topic for world history, and there's a number of different time periods to choose. So we'll click on that specific historical period since 1700. And then the nuclear bomb is obviously in the 20th century, so we want to go from 1800 on. And you've got a couple more specific choices there. So we want to go with 20th century, 909.82. And there's no more specific subdivisions under this, so that's the number we want to go with. So because we're classifying with the topic acted on, we'll classify with world history in the 20th century at 909.82. Now, as usual, like I said, you'll get really used to seeing the phrase, unless otherwise instructed. And you have to remember to be on the lookout for instructions that contradict these rules. So let's do another example. We have a book about pop culture's influence on children. It talks about the influence of television and movies on children. So you probably want to look up both of your topics, children and media and then look up the notes to see if there are anything that tells you to contradict these rules. And normally we would say that children are what is being acted on here, so we'd want to class with children. And we'll see that there's a subdivision under media for history and description with respects to kinds of persons. If we click on that, you know, children are a kind of person, so it says to class here the effect of mass media on specific groups. So this is an instruction that contradicts that rule of application. Even though media is the thing doing the influencing here, this is a case in which you would class your book here instead of with children. And so 302.23 is the number, and there's also a specific subdivision you can use to specify that we're talking about children instead of just people in general. And we'll talk more about that next week because that gets into the tables and standard subdivisions. But for now, we'll just say that even though media is the one doing the influencing, this is a, an example of unless otherwise instructed, and we we're going to follow that note and class it with media. So those are the five rules that you use when dealing with more than one subject in the same discipline. Does anybody have any questions on these? Okay, and if you do throughout the course of the week, definitely feel free to call or email me. We are going to switch gears just a little bit here and talk about abridged web GUI. And this is, we've been looking at the online interface throughout the whole session. If you choose to do this for your assignments, that is fine. We have a trial authorization and password that you can use. To get to web GUI, go to connection.oclc.org. And this address will be in the slides that will be available on the class website after the session. So you don't necessarily have to worry about writing this all down, but you can if you want. The authorization is 100.084.456, and the password is TULIP. And I'm going to take a break from our PowerPoint really quick and show you the OCLC interface for WebDUI. I'm sure you were getting an idea of it from the screenshots, but it helps just a little bit to know how to navigate it. So you'll have a login box when you get here and use that login and password that I gave you. And this is the screen you'll see when you log in. And we want to go to Dewey Services up at the top of the screen. And you'll see that Abridged Web Dewey is where we're at, and that's where you want to be. What you'll see when you first come to the screen is the search screen. And if you want to search keywords through all of Dewey, you can do that. Um, if you want to get to what we were doing for most of our examples and browsing the relative index, I would click on Browse up here. And then you'll see you have various options, the relative index, the relative index with keyword and context. So you can type in your search term and browse. For example, this is our search for cryptography. And then, like I said, the numbers are all hyperlinked, so we'll take you to the exact spot in the schedule where you want to be.
There's also the search page, like I mentioned before. If you want to search, you can go ahead and do that. And the things that I've been talking about, like the introduction, where you can find a lot of the directions and things, are up here under Show Options in Web Dewey. In a print Dewey, they're just at the beginning of the book, but the instructions are up here. And it opens in a new page. And so you can see all the instructions here. And you'll see the section 5 here is what we've been talking about with determining the subject and determining the discipline and dealing with more than one subject. So you can always refer back to that. So that's the basic overview of Web Dewey and how the interface works. So that is all of our material for this week, unless there are any questions. You do have an assignment that will be due by 8 a.m. next Tuesday, so right before this next session starts. It will be up at that class website address. If you have any questions throughout the week, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. Um, the assignments are submitted via email, so you can go ahead and email them to me. The next session will be June 15th, same time, 9.30 Central. There will be the handouts, the slides should be up on the web prior to class on that same class website. And we're going to talk more about dealing with more than one subject in more than one discipline, the table of last resort, and we will start the topic of number building with table one. So again, remember that the recording will be available on the class website if you want to go back and refer to it, and definitely get in touch with me during the week if you have any questions. If there aren't any more questions at the moment, then thank you all for joining me, and I will look forward to seeing you next week.